So we'll just wait a few minutes for the participants to join. You can see some attendees coming in now. Just to just need a few minutes to allow the attendees to to hit OK as they log in. Yeah, yeah, no dramas. So we've had a very busy chat session this morning in the event. Um, okay, so I can that's see good. the attendees that's coming good. in now. And I've I've actually just said to everyone who is in our room, come across to this session to hear hear okay. you know from Vid who's live on live on the scene. Um, <laughs> so we'll we'll get started. We've got some attendees in the session now and, and there should be more who join as we as we continue. But okay. um uh, so everybody understands how we're going to run this session. It's only a, a short um, rapid fire session where um, I'm Wendy from James Cook University and I'm joined with much thanks from Vidishan who's joining us from placement. Hello. <laughs> um, so Vid is a current uh, JCU medicine student and we're just going to go through some sort of tips and tricks on, on how to make the transition to medicine um, at JCU a little bit easier, but also uh, help you to understand a little bit about what makes the, the program unique and, and what, um, what life is like as a student. So um, this session is going to focus on the medicine program and, and we had a session, second session in an hour and 20 minutes um, at 8.20 Eastern where I'll ask some, um, did some questions about student life in general at JCU. So that's, this session won't focus on that. So let's start. Vid, can you tell us a bit about yourself? Um, what motivated you to apply to the JCU medicine program? and where you're up to in your medicine journey. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Thanks for that introduction, Wendy. But um, yeah, hey guys, my name's Ved. Um, I grew up in Sydney, um, down in New South Wales, um, but I was born over in Sri Lanka, and then I moved here um, to do, I, st I started with physiotherapy at JCU in 2015, so I've been around for a bit. But what, my, what motivated me to do medicine, um, it's been like a kind of, hasn't always been like a long-term goal of mine that, for most people it is um I actually wanted to become a vet and I wanted to work with leatherback sea turtles and I got this awesome opportunity to go to Costa Rica to work on leatherback sea turtles I got this little turtle that reminds me of my journey <laughs> uh, and um so while I was there we realized one of the community we got one at one of our colleagues she got sick and we wanted to take her to the doctor realized this community didn't have a doctor they had to wait for two weeks to see, have a visiting doctor come through. And I'm like, look, animals, I wanted to be the voice of the voiceless. I know animals are important, but it kind of made me realise there are rural Australia, like rural Australians or Indigenous people around um, the world and in rural communities who don't have adequate health care. And so that was that spark to me. And then from that day onwards, it wasn't that I wanted to be a doctor. It was like, I want to be a rural doctor. And me growing up in the city of Sydney, it was like, oh, that doesn't, it doesn't make sense for me to live in a city and be like, hey, I want to work in rural. But therefore, I moved to JCU in Townsville. Um, and then, you know, and then we wanted this as a stepping stone for me to go out push. So that's my reason now for being here at JCU. And I'm right currently in my fifth year. So in less than two weeks, almost there. seven, oh, in <laughs> seven weeks, got the biggest exams. Um, that's the final exit exams almost. Um, uh, so really should be shitting bricks at the moment, but, uh, <laughs> but I'm still trying to get there and, uh, yeah, enjoying and currently on my placement. So in terms of placement, so in fifth year, you do a surgical placement, a medical placement, a, a pediatric obs and gynae, um, a GP, and I've done all of those and currently in my mental health rotation. Thanks, Vid. So uh, if I, I think I mentioned it at the beginning, but there were still some people joining. So Vid is joining us from the middle of a, a rotation, out of a round right now, and was online, um, oh, sorry, on clinical placement until quite late last night as well. So uh, it's very kind of you to join us. We really appreciate it. Um, so you mentioned that you moved to Townsville to study medicine. Do you have any tips and tricks for making that transition um, easier? Mm. You know, so for some of our students, it'll be moving from the other side of the world. And from, for you, it was moving from Sydney. Absolutely. Like, so it's not, I mean, yes, moving countries for you guys is going to be a big challenge. But I had to go through that a couple of years ago when my family moved to Australia. But moving from Sydney to Townsville is almost the same. I, when I moved to Townsville, I did not know a single person in Townsville. And you know, I could have changed my name and pretended I was a completely different person if I had wanted to. But I decided, no, you know, <laughs> I'll stay the same there. And, but the thing is that what you realize is that a lot of people are on the same boat and therefore that transition is 
a lot more easier because, you know, we're all on the same boat, you know, we're missing, missing our families, the whole environment's new. Um, so making friends has been super, super easy in Townsville, um, just at JCU in general, doesn't have to be medicine related as well. Luckily for me, I've lived on campus um, to begin with. So that gave me an opportunity to kind of get my bearings and meet some like-minded people before I moved down into like a share house and things like that. But like in terms of like that transition, because this is one of the universities compared to my other friends who study at bigger universities down south where you're just a number or just a, a number that fills up the seat. We are very small enough but big as well. We're small enough for the lecturers and, and clinicians to know you on a first name basis, which has been really helpful in a, a number of ways. One, you feel valid. And if you don't rock up to classes, you know, they do kind of recognize that. So kind of, you know, the best of both worlds. So uh, the transition has not been a challenge for me and I'm sure you guys will all be fine. Thanks, Vid. And I should say, Vid has just displayed the pride that our students tend to have in Townsville and Cairns, not to put down other locations. <laughs> But um, but it really it really is you know when, when you get to Townsville or Cairns and to either of our campuses they are a community in themselves and that's coming through really strongly for you Vid. Um, so we've actually um, I'm happy to take questions in in the chat and if they're appropriate to this session I'll ask them here otherwise we can always respond to them in our room or we can ask them in the next session. But there's a really good question from Kashaf that's come through now. How do you get placements? How how do you, how do you get to yeah. be where you are right now do you, do you yeah. just pick something out of a hat or is, is there something <laughs> a bit more behind it <laughs> no I think I think that's a great question and another thing that JCU is really good about is the fact that we have so many clinical hands-on experience from the get-go if they don't wait till you get to third year with giving you knowledge, be like, okay, now you're ready to go to the hospital. Nah, nah, nah. When, from first year onwards, you're expected to do a couple of placements. In first year, you organize your own GP placement. Not a lot, like a couple of days, like three, four days of GP placement, just to get, you know, understanding of the healthcare system. And then towards the end of first year, you do a two-week elective placement. So that could be anything in medicine or outside of medicine. If you feel like, hey, I want to see what does. I don't want to, I want to see what dentistry does. It's just, it um, kind of shows you what allied health because, you know, medicine, what you'll realise is that, you know, you, you guys, you know, we are not the sole care, um, you know, health caregivers. Without a team of multidisciplinary, um, you know, allied health staff, it is impossible to deliver holistic care um, to our patients. So, you know, giving that understanding in second year, in first year. And second year, you just put your preferences down. You've got to do a four-week rural placement. And that can be happening in the middle of the year or at the end of the year. And you, you put your preferences down. And there are options, I'm not sure with COVID and whatnot, but in the past, there has been options where students can go back home and do their rural placement in their home country, but as long as it's in a rural town. But um, so that's a lot, some friend, uh, friends of mine have done that, but I got to go to this community called Collinsville. And, you know, there's a one single doctor town and you put your preferences down, but sometimes you might not get it. But, you know, as long as you go in with an open mind, and that's my biggest statement, if you have an open mind towards placement and, you know, be wanting to be there, um, you know, because, you know, especially on rural placements, what you give in, what you get back. If you go and be like, oh, I really don't like to do rural and it's going to be a bit of a, you know, it's going to be a boring thing, you know, and that's what will translate through the clinicians and patients, whereas people oh hey Mena's there too so Mena's Canadian <laughs> hey guys so can Mena can answer so, some of these questions but Mena is uh, <laughs> I'll like introduce Mena he is one of your Canadian um friends who come up from Austrek itself so he'll be able to answer some of the questions as well thanks we weren't sure if Mena was going to be able to join us which is why we have double vid which is fantastic um, so thanks very much for joining us. I know, Minna, you're also on placement. So we've only got a, a few minutes left and I'd like to just, um, we were just talking a bit about how placements are organised. So let's move on to um, a couple of other questions uh, related to that. Can you tell us um, a bit without obviously, you know, going into detail that's inappropriate about what your, your day on a placement looks like, Vid? Yeah. So morning. So this, I've just on my mental health rotation right now. So at eight o'clock we came through and we get like a ward sheet and that's like where all the clinicians write some of the patient details down. And then once we write, and then we sit down as the clinicians, the RMOs, the registrars, 
And then once we discuss who, which patients we're going to see, we're going to now join the team and then go for a walk along the ward um, and then see them, uh, you see these patients. And while we do, as medical students, you can, uh, you can take notes, you can sit on the corner and you know, listen into the conversations as well, or help the clinicians by running around and you know, taking some notes and whatnot. So you'd do that for half a day. And then whilst you do this, um, you know, there'll be some sessions you'll be able to go on outreaches and things like that to different communities while you're on that same team. And then, um, so that depends on what rotation you're on. So mental health is a lot more di didactic. Um, and whereas our, our surgery, Menno's just uh, finished his, uh, no, he's on his surgical rotation at the moment, I believe. So therefore then they'll do the same thing. They'll do some ward rounds and then they go to some surgeries. Um, and, and then where he'll get to scrub in, which Menno, do you want to talk about that? Um. Yeah, well, I guess, are we talking about fifth year specifically or just kind no, just, of... No, just, just placement. Placement as a whole. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, yeah. I guess, yeah. So in your, you guys might already kind of know your first three years or your pre-clinical years, meaning kind of before you're in hospital. Um, but in those years, you still get... Uh, placement opportunities um, in first year you've got a small GP stent um, where you get to see that sort of stuff and then you have an elective as well where you get to choose um, something that you're interested in and it can be anything in yeah. medicine and um, that you kind of self-organize um, then First, first year, you don't really know too much. It's more kind of getting yourself familiar with the system. And then second year, you have a rural placement. And that's kind of when you really start to do kind of medicine things and feel like a medical student because it's on rural placement where they get you to do hands-on stuff. Occasionally, they'll get you to see, even in second year, they'll get you to kind of speak to a patient, take a history, come up with your own kind of ideas of what you should do. Um, you'll be wrong because <laughs> you're in second year and you don't know anything yet. But um, most, most of the rural sites um, have ex-JCU students there and it's um, an incredibly supportive environment. Um, and you get to do procedural things as well, like take blood, put cannulas in, suture, and, you know, you're from like yeah. the second year on with depending, especially on rural sides, you get to do them. Sorry, Wendy, I might, because Menno's going to be able to join this session and they might ask that transition because he's Canadian. He might be able to give that Canadian insight into coming to Townsville for these students. And I'll be able to answer yeah. some of the questions in the next session. That's a good idea, Vid. Yeah. Um, so, Menno, when we when we started, I just asked Vid about the transition of, of moving from another location. And obviously yeah. for him, it was from Sydney to Townsville. Yours was a, a yeah. bit further. Um, and, and what we're really keen to focus on is, you know, really positive concrete tips to make it easier rather than all, all the stuff that can be challenging. What is it that yeah. can help um, make that easier from your perspective? So I guess it's just kind of basic stuff that people don't really tell you. Um, I guess first up, when when um, you got your acceptance to medicine, it's like, oh no, do I need to prepare? Like, do I need to start studying for med school? Like, um, you don't have much holidays left in your future career. Like each year your holiday gets shorter and shorter. Um, just enjoy it. The, the course is designed um, for, you know, high school leavers. So they, they really like ease you into it at the start. Um, and then the other stuff is just simple things like your clinical clothes, so, which I guess this is considered clinical dress for blokes. Um, and I, I can't really speak for the ladies, but clothes and that stuff is much more expensive in Australia. So buy, buy that stuff before you come over um get your laptop and all of that stuff before you come over um you don't need to buy microsoft office and microsoft word and that stuff though um because once you're a jcu student you can download that for free on your computers 
So get your computer, have your choice. I personally like one that you can write with pen. Ah, uh, one minute. Um, yeah, um, we are go we're going to have to wrap it up because yeah. I'm really conscious that I know as Trek's working to a really strict strict, yeah. strict schedule um, and there's another session they need to get going. Sure. If um, you guys have any other kind of questions or concerns, just message myself or Vid. Vid can give you guys my contacts. But the other main thing, international students sometimes um, feel a bit homesick and things like that and something that can help. Um, it's challenging if you're from a particular religious group and you're coming in and you don't have any connections when you arrive. Um, so again, message myself and Vid and we can see if we can link you guys in with um, whatever um, people you, you'd want and, before you and JC has a lot to of provide support. a community. Oh, yeah. yeah, JC's got a lot of support yeah. and the chaplain to service we can like, you know, connect you with about these groups as well. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, so thank you very much for joining us on a very, very busy morning. Um, and uh, Vid and I will be back again in, in a little bit, but um, thank you very much. And please feel free to join us in the in the Austrek um, JCU yeah. booth. Hold on to your questions uh, and ask us then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Thanks, Menno and Vid. Yeah. Bye. See you. Thank you so much, everyone.